Hello, hello! It's been a minute and I'm very excited to be back on YouTube and today is very, very special. Before I get started, if you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. Hit the little button and yeah, I promise you won't regret it. Today's video is super exciting because Live Tinted has officially launched our mineral SPF. This isn't the final, final bottle. These were the test ones that we were doing and it's gonna be a little different, but the same idea. Meet Hugard. Hugard is a mineral SPF 30 that is reef safe, vegan, fragrance free, cruelty free, made with clean ingredients, has UVA, UVB, and blue light protection. No white cast inside a 100% PCR tube, so it's environmentally friendly as much as we could do, and has over 18% zinc oxide. Anyone who's an SPF fanatic would be very excited about that. It is a beautiful marigold color. It was really important to me that from the get-go that this product did not have that white cast that we experienced as kids. I wanted to show you guys what it looks like once it's dried down. This hand has Hugard on it, this hand doesn't. Both no white cast. I know. We did it, it took two years, but we did it. To celebrate the launch of this product that I'm so, so, so excited about, I am with Dr. V, who I have, am such a huge admirer of and love dearly, and it is just so cool to be doing this launch with another brown woman who's killing the game. So thanks, Dr. V, for being here. I'm very, very excited to have you. I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> this is so awesome. There's a lot of questions around SPF. For me personally, just even growing up, I didn't even, I think I was supposed to wear SPF because I was like, I don't burn. The amount I've learned since that point in my life as that girl who sat out in the sun and turned black and came home and her mom started crying to where I am now <laughs> is crazy. So anyways, can you share a bit about the myth that people of color don't need sunscreen and why that myth is so dangerous? I'm really shocked that people still think this. I get, you know, like 40 years ago, half a century ago, people would say this. I think now, I mean, every kid like goes to school with sunscreen in their bag in the UK. I don't know what it's like in other countries, but it's become like very normal. I think skin cancer has been the number one thing that, you know, we're worried about in the UK. But the thing I'm also worried about for skin of color is of course, melasma, because melasma occurs in the mid twenties to thirties. Why? Because our, ki our parents didn't put SPF on us. And the bottom line is our melanocytes are large. Those are cells that produce the pigment melanin. So those cells, they become angry and they start to fire out melanin. And so you start to get pigmentation here. The problem is people look at it and they think, oh, they're cute, they're little freckles. It's not, that's early signs of sun damage. Do we need to wear sunscreen all year round, even if it's not that sunny outside? Yes, yeah, so like right now I'm inside and uh, the window's about a meter away from me and I'm wearing sunscreen. And I would wear sunscreen, whether it's summer, winter, UV is there all year round. Your skin is under assault every time you leave your house. We're not just talking about UV, that's the worst, but also pollution is what ages you rapidly. Yeah, we also did blue light protection in ours, like the blue lights that you get from electronics and stuff. There's pollution everywhere. I know, it is. And honestly, those people who live in the countryside are gonna look younger for longer. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Us city <laughs> girls, we're screwed. So we need to extra wear our SPF. The next question is, what's the difference between chemical and mineral sunscreen? And why should somebody choose chemical versus mineral? So I would always recommend mineral sunscreen over chemical sunscreen. There's not a huge amount of difference in terms of the mechanism of action. The reason why I personally would choose mineral over chemical is for a couple of reasons. One, chemical sunscreen does enter the bloodstream, it does enter the urine, and it does enter breast milk. And this is why we tell pregnant women to please use mineral sunscreen over chemical sunscreen. Number two, we don't know the long-term consequences of having chemical filters in our bloodstream. There's no long-term study been done on it. And that's why, again, I prefer zinc oxide because it sits on the skin. It doesn't absorb into the blood. But the other reason I love zinc oxide is because it's anti-inflammatory. Anyone with a sensitive skin or a damage skin barrier, say for eczema, you're likely to find zinc oxide more soothing than chemical filters. But the problem has just been the white cast. It's not that we don't want to wear sunscreen, it's just we don't want to look like, you know, we've got this ridiculous white mask on. There's something so psychologically messed up about having white smeared on your face. I've just had these memories of like trying to become more white in every way with my hair color, my eyes, my skin color, avoiding the sun. So this launch is much heavier than just protecting your hues, which is obviously very important, but it's a celebration of going out there and enjoying your sun while protected. 
It is really hard to develop an SPF that has all those things that we just described and it's also expensive, but it's also important. pre hugard in my life, I would use chemical ones because it, to me it was the priority was the not, no white cast. To be fair though, a lot of brands are doing much better with mineral SPFs. Like I've tried one from Biosense, um, Burst. You know, I, I wanna shout out the brands that are doing it right and making the efforts to at least make it so there's a minimal white cast on your skin because at the end of the day, because of the zinc oxide, you will have a slight whiteness to your skin, but there are efforts you can make to really make it so it blends out. Like once it dries onto your skin, it's not as extreme white. Is that right? I think the mistake people make is they put their sunscreen on and, and they're judging their sunscreen at that moment because you need to basically create a film across the face. Another mistake that people make with their sunscreen is that they put their sunscreen on their hands, they do this and all the products got on their hands and then they put it on their face. That's another big mistake. I want you to put a quarter of a teaspoon onto your hand Quarter of a teaspoon. Quarter of a teaspoon. There we go. Oh, that's it. You're showing us. And then you literally dot it across the face because you want an even film. Most SPS, you can pour it out, right? And so ours, we wanted to make it feel like more of like a face product specifically. And so we made it in pump form. So four pumps of this is how much you would say for your full face. Yeah. Why does it only last for two hours and require constant application? We are sweating. We may have water that hits our face, especially if you're swimming. This whole thing is about making sure we have a continuous film as a shield protecting our skin. The second you have some sweat, sweat will disintegrate that SPF. It will separate it and suddenly UV is now hitting the skin. You're getting free radicals that are forming in the skin and that's what damages your collagen. I was told over and over again, the day I hit 30, I will regret not taking care of my skin like the way that I should be. And I was like, it's fine. My mom has amazing skin. It's fine. I'm going to be great. My mom looks great. My mom does not live the lifestyle I live. She does not drink the wine that I drink. She does not layer the makeup that I layer. She's probably she as stressed as you as well. Like I think our generation yeah. is so stressed. Find a sunscreen that you're going to reapply and reapply it. Just put it in your handbag and make it habit. A big mistake is people shovel their stuff maybe into a bag, their makeup bag, and then they're trying to find stuff and they will forget different steps. But I have my makeup uh, all arranged out. So it's just a habit of going through your list. Which is why a lot of people do foundation with SPF in it, because people otherwise are not going to take that extra step to do it. It's not enough. It's just not enough. Honestly, you know, SPF with foundation, first of all, you're only going to get 15, 20, 25 max. And then imagine how much sunscreen you have to wear. You're not wearing that much foundation to be able to give you that full range that you're putting on. That's a really good point. Wow, yeah, so it's just about creating a routine and a regimen. How does not wearing SPF uniquely impact people of color when it comes to hyperpigmentation? Here's the deal. Don't bother buying anything to treat your pigmentation if you're not wearing sunscreen. There is no ingredient in the world that will save your skin if you're not wearing sunscreen. Five minutes of direct UV hitting the face is going to make your melanocytes tingle and your pigmentation will be worse the following day, guaranteed. Honestly, if you buy nothing other than your moisturizer and your sunscreen, I am happy. That's really good advice. So literally all these people who like don't want to have a 14 step skincare routine, she's basically saying moisturizer SPF at like that if, if nothing else. Why does a white cast even exist? So zinc oxide, is a mineral like in yours you've got 18 percent zinc oxide zinc oxide is a white particle you know you're trying to basically make chalk not look like chalk <laughs> you know? zinc oxide is in spf because it does what so zinc oxide is a particle that uh, helps with either reflecting uv rays or absorbing uv rays within a band to reduce the energy of UV hitting the skin. And when that happens, you have less free radicals being produced in the skin. And free radicals are bad, and that's what leads to aging. That's what damages the collagen. This is brilliant. It's really great. Honestly, it's a brilliant formula. And you've got 18%. Is the idea the more zinc oxide, the more protection that you're getting? There is, but it's also about how it's dispersed. It's because of the formulation. It's not down to the amount of zinc oxide in the sunscreen. I used to think it was down to the zinc, the amount when I first started, I thought that was it. Let me go for 25%, let me go for 30% zinc oxide. First of all, it's impossible to formulate with those percentages. It's not going to directly correlate to the SPF rating that you get at the end of Got it. Got it. As a brown girl, I was taught to go reach for SPF 80 
and SPF 100. And what I've been taught by a dermatologist the last few years was that it's actually just a very incremental difference that you get protection and it's basically marketing after a certain point. They're right in terms of it's literally like 2% more protection, right? Like literally 2% protection between SPF 30 and SPF 50. But when you compare like SPF 15 to SPF 50, for example, uh, it's about 4% difference, but that's four times as much as many photons that are hitting the skin, causing free radicals. So it's actually double the protection, even though it's only 2%. My advice to anybody is pick an SPF that you are going to wear. Honestly, even if it's chemical, because if you're not going to wear it, there's no point buying it and letting it sit on your shelf and go out of date, which it does. My number one thing is protect your skin. Don't waste your money on expensive kits or expensive products or literally anything else buy a sunscreen wear it regularly show your children you're wearing it regularly and get them into the habit of wearing their sunscreen mic drop <laughs> mic drop by dr v thank you so much for being here i really appreciate it and congrats on all your success before we wrap up can you tell people where they can find you absolutely so i'm on youtube uh which is dr Mita rattan you can find me on instagram dr Me uh, skincare by dr v and um, the hyperpigmentation clinic if you follow her she has her dr v verified approved products and you know that they're very credible and honest reviews thank you so much again and this is so cool to finally get to do this i know thank you so much for having me i really appreciate it